Good morning. I well, thank all of you for coming out. And before we get started, I uh, want to introduce some very important people in the crowd. First of all, Kevin Kane from the Memphis Visitors Convention Bureau. Kevin's here to welcome OJ and Jarrell to Memphis and show them what a great city we have here, despite some of the media reports that have been around the NBA. We're, we've got a, a great city to offer them, a, a vibrant basketball community, and Kevin's here to give them the key to the city this morning, so to speak. Again, thanks for coming out such short notice, Kevin. Also, I'd like to introduce the people who've accompanied OJ and Drell to Memphis this morning. Uh, Jazzy Hartwell, Jazzy, could you step forward from Dallas, Texas? Jarrell's AAU coach and advisor. Then we have uh, OJ's uh, team of representatives, the agents to the stars. Uh, Leon Rose, Leon. Represents LeBron James. Any of you want some LeBron, LeBron James paraphernalia uh, memorabilia, he'll get a sign for you. M Maverick Carter. Maverick, step forward. Also works with, uh, with Leon, and they rep rep represent uh, OJ. Uh, and uh, Benny. Benny Cheeks from Huntington, West Virginia, the hometown OJ Mayo, a close friend and confidant of him. And we welcome all these uh, people who have been so close to our two draft choices uh, to our fair city. Uh, this is a great day for the Grizzlies in the city of Memphis that we can introduce our draft choices from the 2008 draft. O.J. Mayo, we made the trade with uh, last night, the big trade that went down very late in the evening and missed some of the deadlines of the various uh, media outlets. Uh, and Darrell Arthur, to his left, who we picked up in an exchange with Houston into the 27th and 28th picks. We're absolutely ecstatic uh, that these young men will be joining the Grizzlies. They are very high-profile, branded basketball players uh, who've been considered among the best in their age group elite players ever since they first picked up a basketball. They had outstanding college careers, uh, OJ at USC, and I'm sure a few of you out there remember Darrell Arthur uh, from the NCAA tournament this year with the Kansas Jayhawks. So this, again, is a very uh, momentous day for us. We're thrilled to welcome them into uh, the fold of our franchise. And uh, if anybody has any questions, we'll talk to you. Hi, fellas. Welcome to Memphis Star History Channel 5. Uh, tell us a little bit, uh, OJ and Darrell, about how this went down for you when you heard about this deal happening and, and your first reaction to it. Start with OJ. I was happy about the deal. Um, I got selected to New Orleans, got traded to Portland, got traded to Houston, and came here. So, I mean, uh, <laughs> I really didn't uh, want to go too far to Portland. So, I mean, this is, uh, would be probably the best spot for me. Uh, I've got a young and uprising team, and I uh, just come and try to impact it uh, with my friend here, OJ. Uh, I was having a, um, a job play with family and friends, and uh, it just so happened that uh, Rudy Gay had just now walked in, and then uh, some of my family and friends had told me I've been traded to Memphis, and Rudy walked in, so it was, you know, it was, it was, it was a great feeling. And I was happy to see Rudy and tell him, uh, you know, thank you, and uh, I'd be happy to be playing with him and, uh, for the Memphis uh, Grizzlies organization. Tell us about, uh, well, first Minnesota was after you. Did they tell you anything was going on, or did you know anything was going on at the time? I found out on ESPN, so <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know what was going on. Um, when they had first told me that they was jumping around, and then uh, once I seen it on ESPN, you know, I was happy. You know, uh, I've been in Memphis a few times when I was young, and then uh, last summer you know, for the USA game. Uh, you know, Memphis is a great city, so I love being in Memphis, and I love the city. With Darrell, you, you were in the green room for a good while last night. It, it was something about the, the, the kidney test or whatever. A little bit, did he tell you anything that that was going to be a problem? And and then for Mark Ironi about having Darrell just basically fall in your lap a lot of the things. Um, I 
think it was going to be a problem at all. Uh, in Orlando, I had the blood work done, and my kidney level was kind of high. Uh, I was taking Claritin for my cold, and they said that was probably the reason for it. And I got blood work done in Washington the day before the draft, and everything came out fine. So I thought everything would have been fine. And I thought the team would have been notified about it, so I really didn't know what was going on. Well, Jarvis, I'll just say that you know this town has been maligned for not having a lot of luck. Uh, I thought we had tremendous luck last night. Uh, obviously, the, the basketball staff and with the direction of everyone from, from Mike Heisley down, uh, we took advantage of that luck. And how many times do you end up with two lottery players uh, in the same draft when you go in with one pick? Uh, I thought it was a tremendous job, and, and we were not only good, but we were lucky. Like to say back when I worked for the Boston Celtics in 1998, we got lucky with another Kansas Jayhawk, Paul Pierce, that fell down to us at 10. So uh, I feel the same way to get Darrell on the slide to the end of the first round. I know he wasn't very happy, but his misfortune uh, was our fortune, and I think he's um, going to profit for coming here because uh, this community is going to embrace him with open arms, and our, our franchise needs him. So Darrell, sorry about what happened in a way, but kind of glad it did happen to you last night, right? <coughs> Ron Tillery, commercial bill. Um, okay, um, uh, you were most associated with Miami, and then, of course, Minnesota takes you. So I'm, I'm thinking you thought about those situations. What are your impressions about where Memphis is headed and then how you'll be able to impact this situation? Yes, um, well, I, I really didn't know. Um, I actually uh, met everyone from the organization uh, on a Saturday before the draft. And um, so I, I was looking forward from Memphis, you know, on, on down to uh, Miami. And, you know, I'm just happy to be here and, and, and as far as fitting in. I just, you know, want to try to fit in as best as I can possible. And you know, just you know, bring a winning attitude. And um, so I just try to help the team as much as I can. You know, I'm so happy to be here and, and be a part of the organization. Chris, what was, it, what was it about the Chicago workout in OJ that you saw and you knew that you had to have one? Well, we didn't need the workout to verify what an outstanding talent OJ is and what a, and a player that obviously has a chance to have a very significant future in the NBA. What the workout did allow us was a chance to see the great stamina that he has. He went for over an hour and a half, virtually no breaks, wasn't phased at all. And then all of us got an opportunity to, to meet O.J. and his family, uh, Coach Ivoroni and myself, Tony Baroni, and, and Mr. Heisley. And with the college and, and NBA rules, we're not allowed to meet these players while they're coming up. You know, it's, it's not permitted. So this is the first time, even though we've seen O.J. play countless times and watched hours of film, we've never met him before until last Saturday. Uh, so once we met him, everything was cemented about, you know, what an outstanding young man he is. And, and it, the whole package came into place. But, again, we didn't need to actually see the workout um, to put a stamp on O.J. Mayo. His career has put a stamp on, on his potential in the NBA. Uh, this is for both Mr. Heisley and Chris. A little bit about after the pal trade, did you guys feel that you had to swing for the fences and make some moves given that you were basically – Stuck in the fifth and twenty-eighth spot? Uh, no, not at all. I, I, I think, quite frankly, uh, I know that the Paul Gasol trade is uh, 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 not a real popular one. Um, in some circles, uh, some of the trade, you know, to get uh, OJ and, and have to trade Mike Miller is not a popular one. Uh, we are committed to putting a really competitive team on the floor. And I set a target. You have to have a target in the future of three years. I want the team. And quite frankly, we looked and we said we, we can't use as part of that strategy someone who's going to be over 30 when we get to that point. And so quite frankly, we made, Chris and I made a decision to make these decisions. And we are not going to be swayed by whether it's popular or it's not popular. When we put a winning team on the floor, and we will be popular. Until we put a winning team on the floor, we're not going to be popular. That's just the name of the game. So that's it. We, you know, so I'm willing to take all 